Hey everybody, welcome to Hockey Skate Down. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. If you want to join a hockey team, it's free. Click subscribe with the notification bell to all. Thank you all so much. Let's get started. I want to do a Devils video talking about a bunch of different things. You know, um, yes, for Brad's contract, I haven't done a video on that. I wanted to wait till we had some more Devils news because right after that, we uh, had players go on waivers. So I wanted to see what happened with that before I did another video. So I wanted to talk about the players that were on waivers, that they cleared waivers, talk about them a little bit. I want to give an update on Nico Heischer's injury from Lindy Ruff. I'm um, talking about the whole Wooden Subban incident that happened at the last scrimmage, and talk about our lineup for um, you know the next game, how the last uh, the last lines looked for the last practice uh, that was today. So um, a lot of stuff to talk about. Please stay with me throughout. So the first thing I want to talk about is Jesper, Jesper Bratz uh, re-signing. The Devils re-signed Jesper Bratz to a two-year deal worth $5.5 million. It's a $2.75 million AAV, which is great. And, um, you know, Jesper quickly tweeted, um, I'm super excited to get back with the team for another two years and can't wait to get the season started. So um, I like this deal. I like how it's a two-year deal. Definitely a contract that says, you know, Jesper, go out there and show us what, can, what you can do. You know, Fitzgerald said that uh, Jesper Brad is a staple of our team going forward. But um, he even said he wants to see those next steps from him. He wants to see more of a consistent player, a consistent winger who could really, you know, play well. So um, I like this deal. This is definitely a contract that shows that um, Jesper's got to come out there and do what he can. And, um, you know, because we have a lot of players in the pipeline. You know, by that two years, you'll probably see Holtz in the lineup. You'll see Mercer in the lineup, maybe Moynihan. We have a lot of wingers that are coming up in our pipeline. So... Hopefully, yes, for Brad plays well with this deal. I'm sure he will. And I hope they revisit that line with him and Zaka and Brad and uh, Gusev. I really like the way they ended the year. You saw in, in these first couple of scrimmages and practices that uh, Zaka did play with Gusev a bit. But um, I'm hoping that Brad goes back on that line because I really like the chemistry those three showed. If they could really revisit that, that'd be great for us. So, um, you know, he's still doing the whole thing where he's coming over. Um, you know, you have to wait for visa issues and immigration and um, the whole quarantine issue. So once he gets here, I'm sure he'll get a couple of skates in and then, you know, we'll probably see him in, um, you know, after the first couple of games. So excited that Brad's back. That's awesome news. Um, all five players that were sent to waivers cleared. Uh, Merkley, White, which I'm shocked Merkley was sent to waivers. I thought he had an excellent camp. Um, scored a couple of goals that first game. You know, he assisted on Sini's goal in the last uh, scrimmage. I thought he played really well. You know, his shot looked better. His skating looked better. I like the way he had chemistry with Zajac, too. So I thought you could definitely pin them as a line um, to start the year. But um, I'm glad he cleared waivers. Uh, Colton White, Ben Street, Josh Jacobs, and um, Gignac. And the players that were uh, assigned to Albany were uh, Schnarr, Sini, Ball, Akoytyuk, Walsh, and Cormier. And no one really talked about Sini. I like the way he played with us, those those games that he played in um, when he was up with us a couple of years ago. I really thought he really stood out to me in this camp. But, um, you know, he's definitely one of those players that you're going to see called up this year. Because he really showed a lot of speed. Um, and waivers as far as the Devils picked up. The, uh, the Devils claimed goaltender Eric Comrie. And, um, you know, I'm not really too familiar with him. You know, he hasn't played too much in the NHL. And I don't see a lot of AHL games, so I'm not really familiar with him. But just a little background on him, he's 25 years old, played three games for the Red Wings last season, and 16 with the Manitoba Moose of the NHL. Uh, he was a second round pick of the Jets in the 2013 draft, so he's still young at 25 years old. Career record of 2-5-0 and oh in eight NHL appearances, and he's a .911 save percentage in 203 AHL games. So maybe Fitzgerald saw that he's played enough games in the AHL where he could show him what he can do, and maybe he's ready to take that next step to the pro game play more consistently as a backup to Mackenzie Blackwood. So we'll see. Is it going to be Scott Wedgwood that gets it, which I'm guessing? Is it going to be Comrie? I don't know. One of them is going to go towards a taxi squad or maybe go to Binghamton. I don't know what we'll have to see, but um, interesting pickup. Um, and there's an update on Nico Heischer's injury. Coach Lindy Ruff said that Nico was not available for, he's not going to be available for the first game, which everybody kind of assumed. You know, we heard a little while ago, um, as of last week, they had to boot off. And, um, you know, Lindy Ruff said that Nico is progressing, said he is doing well, but not there yet. So um, it's going to take some time. He's probably going to miss a couple of games. Um, you got to give him some time to, um, you know, start walking better with it and then start to skate and, you know, get to that game shape where um, it's going to take some time. We're going to miss him for a little bit. Um, Subban and Wood, they got into an altercation in the last scrimmage. And, um, 
you know, for me, when I saw it, you saw them tussling in the corner, holding each other. They separated, Wood kind of skated away, and Subban was chasing him. I thought I saw a bloody lip, so maybe it was a high stick or something. I don't know. But, you know, Subban kind of got a shot into him at the end in his back. But, um, you know, no, I didn't see any punches exchanged or anything, but you could tell it was a heated exchange. And we've seen this all in the past. You know, even Wood said it was a sibling rivalry, uh, siblings fight. You know, some stuff got heated in the moment, which is understandable. You know, players are fighting for positions on this team. Um, I know they're, they're a lot to make the team, but... You know, they want to show intensity, too, to make it resonate down to the to the young kids to try to show that they can make it as well. So um, we've seen it in the past with even Taves and uh, um, Keith. We've seen it with in, in uh, Vancouver camp this year, too. It's going to happen. Stuff gets heated. Players get into the moment. But, you know, Subban tweeted out today that, um, you know, Wood was in the room next to him. He was signing a jersey, and Subban came up to him and gave him a hug. So it's just stuff that happens in hockey. And nothing really bad. I wouldn't pay no mind to it. But I did see Subban had a brace around his back. So hopefully he's okay. He's looked pretty good in camp. So hopefully his back isn't bothering him this year. Um, Amanda Stein, she tweeted out um, the lineup for the final practice of training camp. Ruff said that he was trying to uh, trying some different looks. So let's go over this because it's interesting. You had Sharon Govich playing on the top left side with Hughes and Palms. Um, you had second line with Johnson, uh, Zaka, and Gusev. I thought that's very interesting. You had Wood with Zajac and Bolquist. You had Kwokunin with McLeod and Bashin. And that's very interesting. Having three players who play in the AHL together on a line. That's very interesting. But I like the way McLeod and Bashin have looked. McLeod has shown a lot of speed in this camp. Uh, you saw Bashin really going to the front of the net, playing those corners well, hounding pucks. And I really like what I've seen from Kulkinen, too. So I think it's going to be a fun line to watch if they can get it together. And then on defense, you had Murray, Subban, Kulikov, and Severson, Smith, Tennyson, and Butcher, and Carrick. So um, I am very curious to see who, where, um, who's going to be in that you know six for our defense. You know, uh, Vanin's not there, so he's dealing with the same thing that Brad's dealing with, with the immigration issues, with the whole coming over, with... Um, you know, with visa problems and with the whole quarantine. So where he's, he's going to miss a couple of games too. So can you see a top six of Murray, Subban, Kulikov, Severson, Smith, and Butcher? You know, Smith can play the left or the right side. So I thought Kulikov would play with Smith being that, you know, with the whole physical element where, where Smith can take over on the offensive side. But I have to wait and see. It's very interesting. But talking about that top line of Sharon Govich, Hughes, and Palms, I really like what I've seen from Sharon Govich. I know a lot of Devils fans have been impressed with him. Played really well in the KHL um, this this offseason. And then um, a lot of Devils fans were hoping it would translate to camp, which it did. And he looks sensational. So started playing on that fourth line. Now he's on that top line. So I'm curious to see how his first NHL stint's going to go. I really like what I see from him. You know, um, Lindy Ruff has said that he's really worked on his shot. And I think the Binghamton coach said that as well, that... Um, he really practiced on his shot. And the thing that he practiced was was trying to get it, getting it off as fast as can with his release. You know, he felt that the, at the beginning of the year was a bit slower. Now he really worked on it to get his shot off really fast. And you saw how it's paying off, how he, how he was scoring at will in the KHL. So he's looking good. He's really looking good. So, um, yeah, that's probably going to be our opening night lineup. Um, Sharon Govich, Hughes, and, pa and Palmieri. Janssen, Zaka, and Gusev. I think that's an interesting combination, too. I really like what I've seen with Zaka and Gusev. You still see that chemistry kind of there. I like what we saw in um, Janssen in that last game, scored a goal in front of the net, kind of had the puck in front as he was skating across and tucked it in. So he's going to be a good player in tight for us. So I really want to see what that line's going to look like. You know, Woods, Zajac, and Boquist, that's an interesting line. Boquist has looked really good in this camp, but he's looked well playing center. So I'm curious to see how he's going to look playing that right side on that line. But he's looked really good. Really definitely took a step from last year. And that's what you want to see from him. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. Hockey season's very close. Uh, starting Thursday. So a um, couple of days away. So comment below what you think about this. All the news that I talked about. Comment below and let me know what you think. And as always, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate your time. Smash that like button. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the Hockey Skate Down. Join the hockey team. Help spread the channel around. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of the night. Have a great day tomorrow. Hockey's back. Let's go Devils. Take it easy. Stay safe.